Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Resonance Arcade. We're playing Metal Gear Solid 2 again today, and hopefully, I said it this last time, but hopefully this time this is the last one. Uh, we are just on the final boss, I believe, and we're obviously Metal Gear Solid is Metal Gear Solid. There's going to be a fair amount of cutscenes, so we cut it off last time, uh, but we'll get straight into it. And I'll let uh, Sam and Lou, as you can see, are with me today. I'll let them uh, commentate and do their uh, do the thing. Thank you very much. Thank you. I look forward so you to see, Seabock is, is is on the top of his game at the moment. You have to actually <laughs> commentate this this way around. Should we do it in hushed tones as well? And then get really, like really a, excited when I'm just about to do something, and then what, bring like it back a, down and bring the... like, Are you <gasps> we see <Jack>? Raiden. <laughs> <laughs> Except we don't see Raiden, we see Solidus. Is beyond repair. I admit that I underestimated you. Yes. I admit I'm going to monologue. Oh, I can look around. <laughs> He's about to give you a bit of a choking to get ready with the triangle for a bit of mashing. The out of you instead, See, it's like I've played this game before or something. I just know what's going to happen. Oh, fucking hell. Oh. Jesus Christ, man. Is this a death already? Nah. This is He's supposed to, to take my life away. He's got to stop in a second. There you go. I think he only does it Jesus. once. I think you're okay. So is that, that to my life for the start of the fight, is it? Um, from. I don't remember. I think you Bastard. might get it. It filled up. He looks so much like his dad, doesn't he? What do you mean? <laughs> ah, I think we're about to get the sort of the denouement of fortune. So if anybody was bothered. To to. <laughs> oh, By the way, really. fortune's still in it. Yeah, I was gonna say it's almost one of them, and it's like remember, uh, sort of. Remember that moody one that came on a minute ago and uh, kind of went. Oh, and then when? <laughs> so, uh, actually, uh, she was having a fight to the death with Snake last time we saw her, and here she's on top, so... Why the uncharacteristic generosity? I'm no philanthropist. Arsenal is far from impregnable. It needs our Metal Gears as guards, a huge payload of warheads, and full air, sea, and land support to function efficiently. So I don't want it. ...attack force without support... Is nothing more than a gigantic Excellent. It's a brilliant way to advertise it and sell it to your comrades, isn't it? What yep. was your objective then? An end to the Patriots. Of, names of the Patriots. Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> they were planning to extend their control to digital information flow with GW and Arsenal. Have we talked about the Patriots, Lee, about what, what they are and they're sort of like the Metal Gear Solid versus of what I guess what you call the Illuminati, the New World Order, the the men the men behind the curtain pulling the strings kind of. Right. Like I did wonder, but I didn't, it never really, never really never really knew what it was. Yeah, it's like an alternate history that sort of kicks. They, when the Metal Gear history starts, it's essentially sort of World War Two. When you go, because it sort of talks about that in Metal Gear Solid Three, um, and then it's a different timeline with this whole shady organization. Running through right up until modern day times. No, there is another way. So yeah, I remember you saying uh, Metal Gear Solid Three set in the sixties, is it? It is. Yeah, you play as Big Boss before he's Big Boss. Um, but you don't think that right at the beginning. If I remember rightly, it was advertised as Snake, wasn't it? So again, you're not sure who you are um, for a little bit at the beginning. They re they released a trailer that had the intro scene, uh, and his code the code name of your, of the guy is Snake in it. But they, they but Kojima quickly said, look, it is just set in the 60s. Like, it was quite right. established early on that there was no twist in that sense. It was just straight up. At that particular moment, at least, anyway. Yeah. There were the twists in the game, obviously. But... Ah, twist. What a twist! So, yeah, Ocelot's doing a bit of evil laughter because Fortune's said something. So funny. Sure, age usually are humorous. Yeah. I wouldn't have minded watching some more of it. But we I would have. I wonder if Ocelot's going to be in uh, Phantom Pain. What are you talking about? Has he, he been he revealed? Is. He, he is. He is. He's been revealed. Yeah, I'm rubbish because I don't watch the trailers. I don't really know what's coming. I don't even know really what the main plot of Exercise. Phantom Pain is. I don't. I haven't followed That's anything. That's okay though, because you don't like to. You're, you've always been like that. Though. You don't like to sort of spoil things for yourself by watching trailers and that. Whereas I sort of like to whet my appetite and go, "Ooh, this what's well, going to happen here?" Sal, my wife's the same. She, uh, she, she has this 
this this need to spoil all of the soaps for herself. So she buys soap weekly and reads all of the all of the stories and all of the rumours and all of the this is actually what's going to happen because there's I don't know how it's formatted because I haven't looked at it but it it's gotta have bits where it's this is definitely the incoming story. This is who does yeah. this. This is it. But they leave big parts out. But she loves spoiling it, and it's like she loves it when she doesn't know. But she also wants to know. I don't, I don't get it personally. I, don't, I just don't want to know. Simple as that. You gotta, you gotta have the willpower to actually avoid it if it's there. It's like the temptation, isn't it? I, I don't succumb to the temptation. I just tend to avoid trailers and stuff as well. I thought you liked watching trailers. Not really. No. Oh, I thought you. Less, well, less, I, less I these days. As well. It's a, it's a strange thing because I like to be surprised, but I also like to. Have some sort of an, of an inside going on. track on what's he sort of going to happen. I don't know really. I mean, with Metal Gear, you're kind of safe because there's always going to be so many secrets and twists anyway that no matter how much the trailer's revealed, you know it's only the tip of the iceberg. So I've seen a lot of stuff, Phantom Pain, but I also know that I don't really know anything about it really. I mean, when I play Ground Zeroes, there's a few bits in that that kind of allude to the story a little bit, um, but I don't yeah. really, unless you've watched the trailers as well, some of it doesn't make sense. Um, well, I imagine that you probably having an understanding of uh, Peace Walker would have helped with Ground Zeroes because it's a direct sequel to it, isn't it? Uh, I assume I, I think it's part of the same game. I'll be honest with you. It feels like a demo of that game. No, I mean Peace Walker was before Ground oh, Zeroes. Right. Yeah, sorry. What is Ocelot on about? Let's just try and get back onto slightly the game. He's explaining Ocelot. what everyone's part in this is so far. Ah, they're talking about the S3 program, the, the whole reason of Raiden's the structure of this mission. Anyone can be shaped into snake. They try to, they, yeah, so the, one of the, this is an exercise sought off by the Patriots to prove that, uh, that they can make soldiers like Big Boss and Solid Snake um, out of more or less anybody with the right uh, stimulus. And this training kernel would provide more than enough data to formulate such a program. You did sell Olga. Because another theme that runs through the series is the idea of battlefield control and mind control of your soldiers. Like, you can condition your soldiers to think and act a certain way. And you can basically rule the world by military force. Kind of. one between Snake and Big Boss. Fortune. You and the rest of Dead Cell stand in for the Foxhound squad that Snake took on in Shadow But you're nowhere near as cool as Foxhound, even though Foxhound were pretty goofy. He just said you're the most impressive collection of freaks outside of Foxhound. They're not, though, I'm sure. They're not. The guys from Metal Gear Solid 3 are way cooler than Dead Cell. Like, yeah, what are they called? The, um, what are they called in Metal Gear Solid 3? I was going to call them Dead Cell again, but that's this game, isn't it? <laughs> when it happens, we'll know. They're called the, the something or others, you know what I mean? Like... So cool, you can't remember the name. Yeah, I remember the names of the individual guys, but I don't remember what they used, like their group is called. The of Dead Cell six months ago was an act of the Patriots. We provoked Ooh. and encouraged your hatred. Are you going to be looking at a hand there? Or a bit crop? of a bad shot there. Well, yeah. I, I was going to say, I, I think it's a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. You know, she was, she was making a fist, but you could have easily panned to the right a bit and just Except shown that. for the appearance of the real <laughs> solid snake. We all love a little bit of PS2 era camel toe, do we not? All now in misfortune is just a part of your project. The fewer polygons are better. There we go. Oh! So but Ocelot's bullets can can kill her. Yeah. <gasps> actually shot. You'd have thought he'd have shot her in the face. Yeah. It would have been funnier if he had. Shot in the tit. Right in it. Do you know why no bullet could hit you? It wasn't magic or some <clears throat> new age mumbo jumbo. Certain Talk about summing everything up in dance. one conversation, though. It's it it's a little bit lazy, I've got to say. This this particular. Is it delivery block of, of block of exposition. Yeah. yeah. The villain explains things to you before you fight. <laughs> yeah. But it is influenced by Hollywood, you know, movie making, isn't it? Which is what they do in in those yeah. movies. We needed a pathetic wretch like you to keep them focused. 
so been our puppet all along, just like Olga. Well, we'll, I will get, when he sort of shows the how they did it, I'll sort of talk about it. But it still doesn't kind of make sense. Thanks to the script that the Patriots wrote for you, pure self-indulgence, absorbed in your own misfortune, you couldn't get enough of the drama. <laughs> That's true. Or Baker Street, by the sounds of it. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. It's just it's actually Bait Street started playing <laughs> during this game. I I got her in the heart. Nope, we got her in the boob, mate. Come on. Mercury breast implants. Thought that was his arm gone again, then. <laughs> Not again. Now he's, he's the bulletproof now one for some reason. Your heart's on the right. What? There's an in for that, my dear. But your luck's run out. This is that's got, quite, versus. That's, that's got to be quite rare. Right, so that's the gizmo yeah. there. That's the gizmo there that makes technology. bullets fly past you. Fortune is wearing a, a swimming costume. Yeah. She's not. That gizmo is nowhere. Unless they've inserted it in her body somewhere. Unless he has to be present for that to work on her. I don't know. I, Let's not a, try and explain it, because I think, I think we'll be here all night. I like the fact that they at least try and explain it a bit. It's not, it's not, you know, psychic powers or anything, but it I still swear, doesn't really make sense. Everything that I'm putting into my game, I'm trying to ground it in some kind of reality. There's some crazy stuff in there and stuff that doesn't really make sense, but at least I'm trying to make it, you know, have a decent explanation for it. I wouldn't like to have a, a, a hole like that as, right, so you've got the gizmo, but does she have it or how does like, that Where work? is it? Yeah. Is it on that big rail gun? But then, like, when she's not on a mission and she can't kill herself, how does it work then? Like, do you know what I mean? It's a bit weird. So, unsurprisingly, Ocelot wasn't even on Solidus' side. No. So he's never, he's never on, like, he's never on anybody's side, Ocelot. He's always double-crossing whoever the fuck you think he's meant to be working with. He's working for the Patriots, though, all the time, basically, isn't he? Yeah. Well, so far, at least, anyway. Pretty much, yeah. Here we go. What? Obviously, that shot the bullets there, didn't it? it shot the bullets. Uh. Huh? Obviously, that shot uh, Snake's handcuffs then when he was deflecting the bullets. Yeah. Perfectly. How does that look? The snake was facing the same direction, so it would only have gone through the handcuffs if it had gone through his body first. <laughs> if that actually happened, I might have, I might have misread that. I think, no, I think that's basically what happened. Oh, yeah, this is where she. Uh, is she going to sacrifice herself to another Metal Gear? Fortune. Don't She's care about it. I'm sick of I'm sick of people sacrificing themselves to Metal Gears in these games now. Well, yeah, best not be sick of it. <laughs> so if you want redemption in these games, you've got to be killed by a giant robot. Overkill. A giant, giant Overkill. Robot suit. Yeah, I wouldn't uh, use all the cluster bombs that Ray has to hit three people. I mean. <laughs> To be fair, half of them are going to hit Ray, aren't they? That's it, everyone down, sorted. But, so yeah, so <gasps> then, so they totally buy it, they totally say, look, it wasn't really psychic powers, and they go, but it kind of was, because look, she just did it. But we're not going to tell you anything else. So there's no such thing as supernatural in Metal Gear, except for when there is. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. What the? That's called having your cake and eating it too, I believe. <laughs> And then the cake becomes a ghost, but it doesn't, but then it is. Imagine getting one of them rockets in <laughs> your face. Kind of crazy quantum cake. Yeah. The cake is only there when you observe it to be there or something. And it's and true because it Snake said it. It exists on the other side of the universe simultaneously or something. <laughs> His name oh, was Robert name? Paulson. Is, is that her name, is it? Oh. Is she the daughter of Joel Flundering? Um, yes. No. Bridget Nielsen. <laughs> what happened to Bridget Nielsen? Where did she go? Hang on, is Bridget She's Nielsen the black Sonya. one? No, that's um, that's. Uh... Oh, oh, I was Grace, Grace, Jones. Jones. Grace Jones. Grace Jones, yeah, Grace Jones is terrifying. It was a little <laughs> bit like Bridget Nielsen. They're both really tall, imposing women with sort of eighties sticky up haircuts. <laughs> they both look, yeah, they've got a similar look, but they're different skin colours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And they've what? both been in, uh, they've both been in sort of Conan films with Arnie, haven't they? Because Grace Jones is in Conan the Barbarian too, and what's her name was in? Was it Red Sonia? Red no. Sonia. With Red Arnie Sonya. was in it. 
And yeah. He, had his, he basically was playing Conan in that Conan. film. Conan. It, it was just Conan. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't called Conan, think, but he basically. I kind of like that film. Have there was you a explained... scene near the end where they uh, walk across the big, a big bone bridge, which is iconic. Ooh, okay. I've seen it, but I don't remember much about it. Have they explained why he's got Liquid's arm? I can't remember why he'd made that um, decision. No, they haven't. They just said that he's got it. I'm guessing it's because it was the only arm on hand he could get a transplant from. <laughs> yeah, he's like that. Chop it off quick. Get it sewn on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's he got Liquid's voice now. He's he pulled has. his hair down. Yeah. I've been waiting for this. No, 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 no. And it is. I've been inside this arm all along, waiting for the right time to awaken. Oh God! Ah oh, ha ha! It's me. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. You were Not awesome. Us, Stupid. Yes, a sleeper in the arm of a patriot spy. It was you two years ago. Exactly. I was controlling him. Yeah. A bit much, this a bit. I, that I really wish you'd be doing robot this robot with robot his hand as well when he was talking. Give me your tackle kisses. Tackle, tackle. Burrito, burrito, tackle, tackle. But it all turns out to be Mitch Caddy. Yeah. It just gets it's basically, it basically is. It's, it's, it's still twisty, turny. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Double agent type thing. <laughs> I wonder if they played Metal Gear when they yeah. wrote that storyline, because it does seem very similar now that I think about it. His forehead's got all veiny as well. And all, yeah, and also the arm is like massive. It's like a really weirdly misshapen arm. And Liquid's arm was not that hench, was it? <laughs> like just, just the forearm. It's got like Popeye's forearm. That camera angle there was the most gratuitous I've ever seen. Just loads of metal and an arm flapping out the side of it. Ha 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 ha! It is. That's uh, it's Cam Clark, the same guy who did it in the first game. He's yeah. Leonardo from the Turtles and Kaneda from Akira. Not Kaneda. Oh yeah, he's. Uh, Snake has got to now swim Grab his tail. after Metal Gear Ray because that's a thing that you can do. <laughs> I don't care how hard you are. That's no. <laughs> you wouldn't, you wouldn't do that. The gold to swim into the bucket, doesn't it? Instantly sucked <laughs> underneath with, with Metal Gear Ray. Wrecked. Yeah, he would have Ray. got sucked underneath Ray. the dragon just drowned. Drowned as... Oh, they're approaching uh, the place. I, well, I should just say they're approaching New York. <laughs> it's not mince words. So they've just been off the coast of New York all this time? Yeah, because you remember the tanker? That's where the tanker sank. Yeah. Um, at the beginning of the game, it was... They jumped... Uh, what bridge was it? The George oh, Washington he's, Bridge? Oh, going to wait that bridge. Oh, no. That's going to cost the government millions. Actually, millions. Oh, oh, no. It's going under it. Awesome. Oh, so at least they made it like low enough to get under bridges then, eh? Yeah, they piloted that. But you, you, you don't pilot a submarine. Do you pilot a submarine? Yeah. What's the correct That's what they call that? it, yeah, pilot. Yes, you do, yeah. All right. Okay. You, well, you can oh, yeah, you captain it's... them, don't you, I suppose? Yeah, no, it's still a pilot because there's, there's a captain who runs the ship, but the pilot is the one who's in charge of actually driving it. It's, it's yeah, a... yeah. There's no yeah, other okay. real way to get a, a vehicle moving, I think, unless you pilot it or drive it. Yeah, yeah. it's definitely a submarine pilot. It's an official... Uh... Cool. So a ship has got a pilot as well, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah it has. Yeah. Yeah. A navigator as well, though. Yeah. Well, so will a submarine. Yeah. In fact, that probably... there isn't a, there isn't only a single person who just kind of drives it around and does everything. I yeah. could. Ah, easy. Dead easy. <laughs> yeah, sure. They don't call me uh, Chris Hunt for Red October, Seavok for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. The don't. You're laughing in, in time with the uh, Solidus there. <laughs> I actually forgot. I knew that the final battle was on top of a roof at skyscraper, but I forgot entirely how they got there. And now it all makes sense. It just crashes a big, a big massive submarine into it. Into New York, as you would. In, into Federal Hall. And I'm sure the um, the secret defences inside the the Statue of Liberty wouldn't wake up and blast it out of the water or anything. <laughs> Statue of Liberty turns into like. Gypsy Danger from Pacific Rim. <laughs> <Just> fucking... 
da, 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 da. That would be fucking awesome if that happened. I want to live in that world. Actually. Really hope for a sequel where that happens. Yeah, God, that'd be so cool. Well, you might be calling it Atlantic Rim, which there isn't an Atlantic Rim, is there? But that would make total sense. Well, how far into the recording are we? We still like, we haven't actually played anything. I haven't, I haven't played anything. <laughs> You've been strangled a bit. That's basically all that's happened. It's not power. It's coming soon, but I think it's coming. Pretty it's sure. Solos has still got more talking to do. Fortunately. Like now he's got to validate his actions now, hasn't he? Of this I'm fighting for freedom. Everyone, all the villains in Metal Gear are fighting for freedom of some kind or other, which I suppose is kind of intriguing. I do quite like that that they're not just. They're not just evil, out and out evil. They have got a, a twisted morality that they're coming at from a very strange direction. Well, isn't that like that's a trope, though, isn't it? Yeah, most bad guys have their own agenda. There's obviously there's obvious ones that want to just destroy the world, but then there's there's a lot of bad guys in history that are in film history at least that want to do good, but in their own little twisted way. Yeah, of course. Oh, it's totally a trope, but I'd rather go with that one than the, than the. And now I shall rule in total darkness. Yeah. Why I turned into the camp then from fucking Sesame Street? Our existence, a mark of some sort. Yes, the count counting people he's killed. One million. Ah, ah, ah. Two million. From parent to child. <laughs> Genocide is a topic for uh, Sesame Street. Well. Yeah, that would be a different kind of episode. <laughs> totally seamless, the FMV to gameplay stuff, isn't it? Well, at least I didn't even know that it happened. Out, it? I didn't even know there was FMV in this. To protect their power, their own interests, by controlling the digital flow of information. I want my memory, my existence. Ah, this is what I was talking about in the last episode about the uh, history. about controlling the digital, as you just said, controlling what information is allowed to be absorbed by the general public. See, that's exactly what I'm doing in my game, and I really did not realise that I was ripping this off as much as I am. I'm not ripping off the story, obviously. It's just some of the general themes about it I seem to have absorbed somewhere. Well, this game was being more prophetic in talking about this stuff, whereas your game is it's more topical in terms of how we're living right now. Yeah, really, yeah. Because it is a relevant issue. Well, I'm, I'm also doing quite a lot of it's futuristic my game it's set in 200 years in the future we're still here and it's meant to be possible the ai kind of a forewarning type thing yeah who are you if you don't stop using facebook this shit's going to happen basically that's what my game says so don't play it anyone so you and charlie brooker are the uh the harbingers of doom for social media anyway this explains the ai now like the way life started in the oceans four billion years ago the White House was a primordial suit. Why does the AI have to monologue? You, you Everyone's think it's got a monologue in this game. We are the very discipline and morality. Well, this is actually the Patriots speaking to him via the AI, isn't it? Essentially. Yeah, essentially. This nation exists, so will we. Cut the crap. If you're immortal, why would you take away individual freedoms and censor the net? <laughs> Jack, don't be silly. Don't you know that our plans have your interests, not ours, in mind? Why? Well, that's what they all say. Listen carefully. Like a good I'm doing girl. this for you. The mapping of the human genome was completed early this century. As a result, the evolutionary log of the human race lay open to us. We started with genetic engineering, and in the end, we succeeded in digitizing life itself. But there are things not covered by genetic information. What do you mean? Says something, Chris. Ideas, Sorry, culture, I'm yeah. getting into it and quite enjoying the. Uh, Is it something? I'm uh, enjoying the rem, you know, remembering it as it's going along. <laughs> We've always kept records of our lives through words yeah so this is where they, they're talking about what their whole plan is so they're now giving an expedition dump on top of everybody else's on top of the other 40 minutes of exposition dump yeah which again it's 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 kind of an interesting thing that they're talking about i'm not going to deny it but i'm not also going to deny that it isn't a bit fucking heavy when you just want to get a, the last boss battle on, on the way like yeah yeah <laughs> that's i think that's what Playing this the first time through, I didn't feel like this at all about Metal Gear Solid 2. I did not feel like it was laboring the point a bit too much. 
data. Mm. Maybe because of my age when I played it, maybe I was a bit more interested in what games had to say to me. Maybe I was interested in this because it was much more intelligent and much more uh, thought out than a lot of the games I've played, which were basically mindless, just run around and shoot people. Yeah, for its time, again, it, it seemed a lot more sophisticated, I guess, shall we say, as, as a sort of way of giving you a story and ideas, then run to the right or, you know, run to the end of the level, kill boss, done. But it's... Stop talking to your girlfriend, Lou. I'm not. You're doing summer on the other screen. Can... I'm replying to people who are talking about that picture that I put of uh, my chin. Oh, dear. God. <laughs> Picture of what, sorry? I called Lou's chin, chin racist when, when we first started the Skype call earlier on, and he decided to permanent mark a, a swastika on his chin, which was very funny, but at the same time, didn't... and unexpected. Sorry. That's a bit of... That's asking for people to say stuff, isn't it? Always. <laughs> Do you not realise the connotations of what you've just done? It's like, no, no, what is that symbol? I don't, I don't get it. I've not, I've not been alive fucking ever. Well, it's beside the point. It's, it also was used, it was reappropriated, wasn't it, for the Nazis? It was, yeah. But beside That's the point, it's just a symbol. It's the same as t t labels and tags and, you know, racist slurs and things like that. Unless there's a some kind of vitriol behind it, I don't think it's too much of a isn't problem the, um, in my eyes, you know? It's just a word. Isn't the, uh, the, 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 the Hindu swastika symbol, as in the version of that, isn't it the other way around, as in the... It, the, yeah. the little legs, I guess you call them, point the other way. I think so. I think that's, I think? that's possibly a, an urban myth, though. I think they can point both ways. It's, it's a symbol that's been used a long time before the Nazis reappropriated it. Yeah. And it was a much loved symbol as well, which is what I was applying to. Well, it's still, I'm guessing for people that are, into, that are you know, into the Hindu faith, it probably still is. You know, they well, yeah. you know for them, that, that symbolism will have not lost any of its potency. Yeah, but the thing, I guess the problem is that it was ruined by a single individual. The same way that um, my argument is that Charlie Chaplin's moustache was ruined yeah. by Hitler. The Hitler tash. You've ruined Hitler's moustache, mate. <laughs> you, your face has ruined tash. Hitler's moustache. No, I didn't say that. I said your face has ruined oh, Hitler's right. moustache. I had it held a, a special place in my heart until I saw what's going on there. What's <laughs> going on there? What's going on in the story anyway? Oh, I've given up caring actually about this. It's again, it's going on a bit too far. Oh, they're, they're, they're sort of saying that uh, the reason that they do all this stuff is because they don't think that human beings are sophisticated enough to to, to judge what is worth what information is worth having and what information isn't. Kind of half agree with that, but don't at the same time. You know, I think yeah, that. But then again, it is the way of the world at the moment. The media controls quite a lot that goes out. Luckily, the internet allows us to, or people like us, to do uncensored stuff and, you know, put our opinions out there rather than just some person who's, like, written into a TV show that's, you know, filtered and edited before it actually gets read out or, you know, they have to be vetted before they're on there. Well, let's be, let's yeah. be fair. I mean, we're not trying to sell anything. If we were trying to sell something, then suddenly we'd have all those rules applied to us, wouldn't we? Why not try a bit of soul searching? If we were sponsored by we something, would, yeah. if we were endorsing something, then we'd have to to fit in with their their kind of uh, yeah, I suppose corporate personality. Just, just this, uh, this is leads me on to quite nicely into just talking about you know how comfy I'm currently finding my uh, lazy boy that I'm sat in. Lazy boy, available from all good retailers. <laughs> Are you actually in a lazy boy or? No, I'm not. I didn't think. I thought, oh, that's cool. You've got. You went out and bought one. Other <laughs> well, well, chairs are available. And I'm having a really it. nice uh, kind of Coke. Coke is brings life or whatever. They're fucking Coke saying. is better than everything else ever. That's just basically what they're trying to say on these adverts, aren't yeah. they? Chris is wrong. You know what? I'd argue that R and B is better than that, or B and R, or whatever it is. What? RC, that's it. RC caller. I think you meant like the music. <laughs> yeah. R&B is better than any drink. If you feel thirsty, put on some R&B. Building a legacy involves figuring out what is wanted and what needs to be done for that goal. All this. Building a legacy, just leave it to happen now, itself. We think for you. Surely. We are your guardians, after all. Yeah, legacy. It's a weird thing because it's not. People have like. Um, 
obsession with it. Like, uh, there's a character in Game of Thrones who's obsessed with his legacy. He doesn't care about his children. All he cares about is that his children maintain his family name, like, yeah. and keep keep his family in good stead. But he doesn't care about them as individuals in the slightest. And that's like a kind of a scary thing. Like to me, that idea of legacy in that, in that sense. Every, the thing is, is everyone's got a, every person individually has got a different way of doing things and. When you look at an organisation or a, you know a secret society or whatever, they've got their own like tenets and rules and principles. But within that, they've also got individuals that have their own ideas and own way of interpreting those rules. This kind of thing is absolutely crazy to me. You know that the, although I do kind of subscribe to some conspiracy theories, things like this, like the Illuminati and people, you know, people ruling as a, a kind of an oligarch, not oligarchy. Um, kind of a secret society type thing. I think it's crazy to think that, to, to think that one set of people rule the world uh, transparently, not transparently, uh, opaquely, you know? Yeah, I don't think that people are clever enough to, to be that organised to, to do those and kind I, of things. I don't think people are dumb enough to be duped by that either. Was the final test of its effectiveness. Yeah, I agree. I, as, although one of my things is I generally call everybody an idiot on the planet. It's beside, you know, it's. I'd still don't think as a collective mind where we would allow that to happen. I mean, I don't feel like anything outside of my own life really, really affects me. You know, the news and everything else. I don't pay any attention to it. Not because, not because I'm scared of it or anything like that. It's because it doesn't really change anything to me it doesn't change my opinion it doesn't make me fear or scared but it does do that to some people some people yeah. get genuinely scared about what's going on with Ebola or what's going on with, you know at the end of the day I live my life day by day and I'll I'll reap the consequences of whatever things that I've done you know in my life and I'll take responsibility for that there you go sort box over yep yeah. So you've been playing for about 45 minutes now and you, you basically press triangle. Yeah, Jesus Christ, I really, really need to get this get this fight, like, started. Imagine if we didn't talk through this. Well, some people might prefer it, but... I, uh, I think if you, if you... Anyone that does choose to watch us play this game... You do whatever you like. <laughs> you kind of have to accept that it's it not, we're not going to be doing the pure. Yeah. Let's get into the story of Metal Gear. This is more about the general sort of feel and experience of it, rather than the nitty gritty of the story. You have to. It's a kind of game where if you want that, you got to play through it by yourself. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, we, we, me and Sam are big fans, and we we have certain, you know, a certain spot in our heart for these games, but. You can also see the flaws in them, you know? Definitely. I mean, I don't consider anything to be a sacred cow. Nothing's perfect. Even the things that are, that are the, that, you know, in terms of things that have been created, films, books, whatever, Apart even the things that I consider to be 10 out of 10 masterpieces have flaws. Not There's no such thing as perfection. Apart from apart from your football club, whatever football club you follow, <laughs> obviously that's, you know, perfect and everything else is more less important than that. Well, the thing about that is, is that's that's the, one of the frustrating things about certain types of fans is that they they are the ones they they acknowledge that they're not perfect, but they still pour so much into it. Well, um, I think it's an embarrassment thing as well. A lot of the time, it's like I, I could quite easily be embarrassed about the fact that we've played through Metal Gear Solid Two, and Lou and Steve have both criticised it quite heavily, and. To be fair, two of its biggest fans have also criticised it quite heavily. You and I, while we've, we've been playing we've, it, we've slated this collectively. It doesn't be yeah. the case. But like, I could but, be upset about that as a fan of it. You know, there's a lot of people who do get into this kind of fandom that they won't accept that other pe other people have opinions or, or that it isn't perfect, as you said. Yeah, it's like you can't. Some people will not like to accept that any, the thing that they love. Um, has any faults or flaws in it, which is a very a blinkered way to view the world. It's not going to get anywhere. You're not going to get. You're not going to make things better by thinking that everything's perfect. No. You know what I mean? It's not. That goes through all things, doesn't it? Yeah, it is. It is go through all things. I mean, it's like you know, people. People defend something that they like to the nth degree. It doesn't yeah. really matter what it is. If they believe in it and they like it, then then. then... Huh. Sorry, that I, will, I, I will defend. I say I would defend Metal Gear and acknowledge its flaws. I would defend it 
to a level I'd be like, well, I can defend this, this, and this about it. There are certain things about it that I can't honestly defend. I can't defend the ridiculous length that we've had to sit here before any <laughs> gameplay has occurred. And there's, there's no defense for that. I mean, even it's, if you say this a is a game. big... It's a, this is a big mindfuck moment, yeah, but it could have definitely been delivered in, say, 15 minutes rather than 45. If you had a script editor, better, better, better pacing in your writing, it would have been... All that could have been done Hang on. in 15 minutes. Is he just saying that he's... Is, did he just say my son? Is that as in... You said that a few times, you? Yeah, he's calling you like that because he took you on right, when yeah. you were a child soldier. I say, you're not his legitimate son, are you? Know? I don't think you ever find out who Raiden's birth parents are. They talk about him being an orphan when he was found. Since he was from a war-torn country, they probably died, you know, when he was a baby. I was the one who killed your parents. Ooh. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> no! That's not true! It's impossible! I thought I was going to get to play then. I thought he was going to launch at him. I thought that was about to be the start of the fight. And your worst enemy. Why? Because I needed to know whether we were really someone else's creation. So I murdered your parents. What? Liquid and Solid hunted down Big Boss, trying to sever the tie that bound them to him. Unless you kill me and face your past, Jack, you will never escape. You'll stay yeah. in the endless loop. Your own double helix. We <laughs> get the kill this off, for fuck's sake. Here we go. So he's about to throw you a sword. Like and it's going to chop. Before. Watch, watch. It cuts through the hand. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and he didn't even Still got the body armor on, by the way, in the cutscenes. Yeah, yeah. That's quite clever. I quite like that, yeah. I like it when they do that kind of thing. I don't like I, it when they when they change the soak on when you've got a, a machine gun equipped and you've been using that all the time, you know. Yeah, the, uh, that's a really common game thing. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. They drop you down to the, like the, the start the weapon traces. in case you don't have the weapon that they've shown you with, don't they? Suppose. I've forgotten how to play the bloody game. Um, Best triangle. I was, I was going to say, I'm not sure if this fight is easier without using the sword, but it is entirely up to you. You don't have any other weapons, it's either hand-to-hand -hand or sword. But because this, you, you've probably been more used to punching dudes than you have been sword fighting, it's up to you, really. Oh, God, when did John Rude start directing it? Yeah. <sighs> to try and get his pattern. Right then, actual gameplay. Holy shit! Oh, he's... he's isn't so, um, I'm trying to remember what his attack pattern is. Yeah, he'll just like a three attack thing. Um, he also will fire missiles at you as well. There you go. Hit and run tactics, eh? You can, you can just straight up attack him sometimes or get around the side of him. Ah! Ah! <laughs> In your face. All right. Oh, oh! Forgot yeah, about that. He does that. Missiles. Oh, great. Cheers for that camera angle. That really helped. Yeah. Oh! No! Press the wrong button! <laughs> oh, God. I pressed X! <laughs> Did it again. You've got to think about doing that, haven't you? Six. X is the action button. X is the one that does everything. No, triangles. It's, it's the action falling button. off a building, not, not an action. Triangles, the action button. X is the, is the crouch. Catapult. Catapult? Catapult. Cartwheel. Oh, ow. Oh, God. Uh, See what I mean about the rocket boots there? On fire. I'm trying to get rid of yeah. it somehow. I think cartwheel is the best way to get rid of it. Yeah. Oh, bollocks. Yeah, unfortunately, it's really hard to give advice on a fight like this. <laughs> Just got to figure it out and do it. He's crap with those armors, Bizarre, isn't he? Yeah, he gets rid of him in a bit. You, when you get him down to like half health, he chucks him off. <clears throat> Knocked it, knock the bus. Ah. That's how you do it. How has he got, um. Shit, Dom! 
take ages putting your sword away, you knobhead. <laughs> no need for what that. And then he just got it out again when he landed. Oh, what a dick. What were you doing there? Don't I was just back. putting the sword away. I was going to try and fight him with my fist because I wanted to uh, not kill him. But you yeah. seem to be doing well as, as is, to be honest. Yeah, it's you just because I wanted to not kill him, but bugger it. You, you can, I think if you hold square, you'll turn the sword um, to nice. the blunt side and it'll turn blue, won't it? There you go. But you've already taken off so much of yeah, his Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. Just it was a silly it. idea, all right. You don't need to bring, bring me up on it every time I bloody try and do something. So in this in this game, all, wef all weapons that are lethal are red and all weapons that are non-lethal blue? Yeah, that's that's how the symbol is represented. <coughs> oh. do, uh, yeah, I've not really talked about that, but yeah, you'll you'll have noticed that the, the M9 was a blue and the SOCOM was red. The PSG-1T yeah. was blue and the PSG-1 was red, so yeah. Obviously, there weren't any, there weren't any uh, non lethal weapons in Metal Gear Solid 1, but from this point on in the franchise, that's that's the general rule. It's taken you the entire game, by the way, to notice that. It has, I never noticed that. I, I knew that there were red and blue things, but I didn't know what the significance was. Because the body armor's red. Oh. All the items on the on the left hand side, because on the left hand side is the items, whereas right hand side is weapons. Right. So all the items are just red because that's just a standard colour. The blue. Non lethal ones are the exception to the rule if you think about it. Like, all the items' default colour is red. What's um, he doing? What? Oh, right. Yeah, he's, he's... I couldn't move then. I was like, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Hey, he's, got it. he's a boss going to second form. I oh, know, I know. I just wondered Super why I was Saiyan stuck. Super Saiyan level 1 or whatever. 9,000. I don't watch Dragon Ball Z. It happened That's to enough. pause when I was right in the wrong place. Shit, shit, shit. Absolute <laughs> nonsense, that cartoon. Who the hell's calling you now? Yeah, let's see what they've got to say because there'll probably be a. Boss advice. I've got a feeling this is a long call, but if it's not a mandatory one, just skip it. This is your last duty. It's not mandatory. They are just gonna they just, just talk shite. There you go. You don't need that shit in your life, man. <laughs> oh man! Oh god, this is where he starts doing the, the thingies. I do remember that one, so he'll do like three quick ones and then one where he goes straight for you. As like you just experienced, yeah. What the? Love that. Yes. Yo! Fucking camera angles. I keep walking into it because the camera keeps changing. That was a pretty brutal camera switch there, to be honest. That was a bit rubbish. Fair. Oh, look at the state of this shit. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, that was just a blur of images, what we got there on the stream. On the plus side, he's hardly taken any health off you yet. Still doing pretty well here. Yeah. He just, he just had a ration. I distinctly remember this being. It did. All right. Yeah. It did. A lot more difficult. Uh, he hardly took any off me anyway. It's just that I was on fire. I thought that might stop it. Oh, whoa. Um, this fight is difficult, but you you play it on normal. I don't know if you've played this game on hard or whatever, but yeah, I did. Obviously, the bosses get a lot more difficult on the harder difficulties. Jesus. <laughs> Mate. Stay still. That must be oh. so disorientating. Off. Oh. Yeah, that's the that's the challenge of it. It's just the disorientation of the way the camera moves around. It's not that what he does is hard Shit. to evade. It's just that the camera slams around so much. You know what the fuck's going on? This boss has got some cheap shots, hasn't he? Just basically teleports straight at you and hits you. Uh, you kind of there. You go. Oh, done. That was very nicely done there. It wasn't like that difficult, bit. that fight, I'll be honest with you. Whoop, ah, cha, cha, swords, together. And I think that might be the last bit of gameplay. That's it, you're done. You are really? done. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That's the end of the, the, end of the game. Oh, here goes his head. Oh, <laughs> oh nice. Right, he oh, look at that manga stuff. <laughs> Freaking Japanese. Yeah. How blood high is his blood pressure? <laughs> yeah. Pretty high. I remember it's how this ends, but I can't remember how Raiden becomes the ninja. You don't see it till Metal Gear Solid 4. Like he doesn't... Right. He does a flashback, yeah, he... though, doesn't he, and shows you how... Sort he? of, yeah. He talks about it a bit. But we've got a whole of Metal Gear Solid 3 before that ever becomes a thing. Are you sick of it yet, Lou? No, I'm not sick of it. I just... Uh, uh... 
Oh, that happened huge. to be on top of the New York Library as well, which, by the way, is nowhere near the coast. I was thinking <laughs> so... that. I was like, they must have gone through about seven, 17 blocks of fucking New York Manhattan streets to get there. Probably taking down about 17 skyscrapers on their way past. They'll have to go through, pretty much through Wall Street, I think. And, um, uh... I think, no, the flat iron building's a bit further up, I think, but... Anybody who's who might be watching that's been to or from New York, please tell us just how ridiculous it is that they're at this place. <laughs> Where, Considering you know, they, watch they, were, later. they were coming in from that big bridge, and I can't remember the name. Is it the Brooklyn Bridge? Possibly. Um, There's a couple actually around there, isn't there? Yeah, I suppose it depends on which side of Manhattan they were, the island they were on, doesn't it? I didn't. It I didn't notice it? where the Statue of Liberty was. So. Is it as ridiculous as them coming at the coast of England and then appearing at Stonehenge? <laughs> uh, but you, maybe not. Actually, that might be a bit bit further. Why? At least What's New York from? is on the coast. <laughs> Why is that? Does that happen in, in something? Well, it does happen in a lot, in a lot of um, American movies. It's basically, England consists of London, and you go north for a couple of miles, and you're in Stonehenge. You go north a couple of more miles, and you're in Scotland. And you meet yeah. meet, meet a guy called John that everyone knows. Do you know John? <laughs> is that an American accent, Decry? Do you know John? No, I didn't try and do an American accent. <laughs> yes, you did. It's a bit like um, you failed. How would it be, John? A, anyway, in American films, they'll always be like putting the the city and the name of the country, and it's always like it's in America. Paris, France. It, it, yeah, Paris, France. It's like cheers, cheers, mate. <laughs> you know, Paris, Kentucky, then. Yes. Well, to be fair, America's got so many cities that are just nick the names of other cities that it's kind of fair dude. I for just them. want to point out, if anyone remembers September the 11th, when no something crashed, you know, the planes crashed into the buildings. This is kind of kind of a little bit of a comparison to it. People are just walking around the devastation with suitcases going to work. It doesn't matter. Yeah, they don't yeah. care. Unless it hasn't actually happened and he's just all seen it in his head. Which is still tends to be the case by the end of this, this game. You're still not sure if it's real. There's no such thing in the world as absolute reality. Here we go. Most yeah. of what we call real is actually fiction. Words of wisdom from Snake. What you think you see is only as real as your brain tells the you. The Matrix. I was going to say the Matrix. What am I supposed to believe in? What am I going to believe that in? Ass. Through? Yeah. Segways, that's what you got to believe in. Having faith. Believe in me. Is that St. Paul's? What we had faith in. Uh, it's I think, somewhere I think in it was. New York. I could be wrong because it's quite. It's when I went to see, when I went to New York, it was all covered in scaffolding, St. Paul's really Cathedral. So I don't know what it looks like. So they've got St. Paul's in uh, New York as well, I think. Is it St. Paul's? No, St. Paul's is in London. London. Look it up there online, Lou. Unless there is St. John's St. Divine. No, no, it's or St. That, Patrick's. That might be more like it. Is it on? Um, oh, what street St. Patrick's? Yeah, on? it is. It's St. Patrick's. It's covered in. Um, it's covered in shit at the moment. It's got two big spires on it. I don't know if I can. Oh, okay. Yeah, with P. Um, it is on. It's massive as well. Yes, yeah, that's it. Which is adjacent to, um, it's it's near where the the big the big central places. What's it called? Ah, that place. Central Park. Central Park. No, no, the the, the, uh, the square. Times Square. Oh, right, Times Square. I'm so shit. I'm sorry, Mister Americans. You, you that bad. It sounds like you're trying to become a cabbie. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just remember it's it's blocks, isn't it? I just remember certain things from when we were there. Oh, this is quite a cool little touch. So on the dog tags is the name that Chris put in. Dog tags. Which I thought is, is quite a nice, again, the whole <laughs> touch of the Jeff and Jeff. Jeff and Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot about that. Yes. <laughs> so he's not a Jack so, then, is he? Well, that's that's the interesting thing, isn't it? Because that's... <laughs> that's... That's made Lou's life, that has. Look at him. <laughs> Hell, mate. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> ah, take that dog tags. Oh. No longer will people call me Jeff McJefferson. Chris, I'm not you. Jeff anymore, or Jack, or Ryden. I'm somebody else. I'm Greg. <laughs> They're just not asked. These people walking around, they're like, oh, what's that, really what's that big weird. Metal Gear thing that's uh, in the middle of the library? Ah, well, whatever. But it's a bit like that in New York, anyway. 
Oh, that's the thing. It is very much like that in New York. They just get want to get to where they're going and push through people and stuff. Hey, I'm walking here! <laughs> <laughs> it's basically what you think of New York, you think of that sort of thing. Look at the size of it as well, I didn't think it was that big, Jesus. It's still yeah. fit under that bridge. Well, it was, it was, wasn't, but it was, because it's submersible, it would have been... Got his mini disc out again. The one we gave you wasn't the real thing. Of course. What? This virus is coded to destroy only a specific part of the body. You can hear na 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 it's first used when Luke looks out at the sunset, isn't it? But it's used in all the films at some point. Usually at the end, before Is the credits. It's like run. the Skywalker theme, then maybe the family or something. I don't know. Probably maybe. there'll be a name for it. It's a really cool piece of music, no maybe doubt. So. But every bit of music from Star <gasps> Wars is cool, though. Who's that? Rose. Did you say any of that stuff? Yeah, I said it all, but I didn't mean it. Which part was you? Which part was the AI? I don't know. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> Can we just go on? Corey's on. <laughs> Time for a couple of. Not off. <laughs> Not in New York, there won't be. Oh, God. Cup of coffee. Cup of Joe. <laughs> you kill the Joe, you make some more. <laughs> Snake's gone, obviously. Well, he's he's, he's, he's a bird. He's going up. He's going off to the top of the. Oh, there's, there's Hal's parrot. There's the, there's the flying away at the end of a film thing that they do on everything these days. Mm. Like Can the Matrix. <laughs> these days? Yeah, 1998 or something like that, 14, 14 15 years ago now, I think. 99, I think. One of the most copied films, though, like of the last 20 years, easily. Yeah. In terms of like, the action genre. What was it? Was it one of us lot were talking about a, a film where at the end they all get in a car and the car flies off and it, it's to, completely out of place? Back to the Future. They no, do that. no, that's not out of place, is <laughs> it? Well, no, actually, no. The steam train flies off. It, no, you're right. Both of them do that. The, yeah, that at the end of Back to the Future, it flies when it hasn't flown before. But that's just a cool bit because yeah. it's cool. But the end of the Matrix, where he flies off, I know he's in the Matrix and he can do what he wants, and it's just a way of showing it. But it's just terrible. It doesn't I need that. Love that shit. It's only it's only terrible <clears> because of the sequels. If it wasn't for the sequels, I thought that would have been just. It is the perfect ending now. to that. I'd, I if, it, I'd, if he ran really, really fast through the crowd or done something a bit different, but pa super powered, flying, I don't think. I just, I think that was the oh. worst the way they could have finished it. But the, the rest thing, of the like, film was so you, amazing, though, and then that bit of, that spoiled it for me. But if you think of the Matrix as a really large, intricate computer game, um, if you had the power to control things in it. Wouldn't sort of no clipping around the environment be something that you'd do? That's no, because I'd feel like cheating. <laughs> no clipping. <laughs> That's basically what flying is in the Matrix, isn't it? Far from you, you don't no clip through a building. The point of Whatever. no clip is that no clipping means that you're not going to hit yeah, solid people, objects. Pe people use it to basically just navigate around the map, don't they? In any direction that they want, in the air, wherever. It's up to us to teach that to our children. Uh, what kind of thing? Just, in Quake, when you know Cliff, you go into a crouch position and float in the air. Like your legs just come off the ground and you just float around like this. It's just the idea of Neo and no clipping. I've got, I've got no clipping in my game with no clip command on the console. And it's so buggy, it's unbelievable. Every time I kind of stop, it, it kind of... It doesn't. It never comes to a complete halt. It just keeps moving constantly in the air. It's like there's no gravity, but it's not quite that bad. You know, like not like you're in space. Um, and then sometimes, if you stop just above a collider and you're going fast enough downwards, you'll die when you hit it. <laughs> just go. Ah! Cool. <laughs> and it's the Quake 2 sound, pretty much. I've recorded it myself over this mic, me going. Bleh! And it's the Quake 2 sound. <laughs> Did you go for the South Park one? Bleh! Bleh! <laughs> Always makes me laugh when they do that. They haven't done that in ages. This ago. could be the credits. It is. <gasps> Jazz so, credits. shall we shall we leave the credits roll and and continue to talk over it? Even though yeah. whoever has been watching probably hasn't paid any attention to the last bit because yeah. we've been gabbing. 
There is in well, Metal Gear fashion a little secret phone call at the end where a do moment happens. Oh, is it a Marvel ending, is it? Well, it's like the, the last one. They did the same on the last one, didn't they? I, don't, I didn't. I wasn't at that one, was I? He wasn't on that one, Steve was on the end of the Oh, rubbish, yeah. Rubbish. So in that in that ten seconds of gameplay within that <laughs> over an hour of um, video, you've managed to die once at least. Yeah, yeah that was By that falling was a, off a library. To be honest, that was an accident. Yes, it was. Um, so we started this with thirty, didn't we? I'm pretty yes. sure we started yeah. this with exactly thirty. So there's been thirty deaths in each game so far. That's so you can, you can now use that to project across the rest of the games and get your get your saving going on. How many yeah. more games? Is it because we haven't we haven't really decided on a. So next we're going to play Metal Gear Solid Three for definite. Um, I really do want to play Metal Gear Solid um, uh, Peace Walker, but I haven't played it before, so I don't know yeah. if that's fair or not to do that. I, would, I do want to play it. I would say that uh, Peace Walker has the benefit of not because it's designed for a handheld. It's very light on the cutscenes in Codec. Like there is stuff there, but it's all most of it's entirely optional, and you don't need it. And now, is it is it a shorter game or? It's still quite a long game because it's very it's lots of side missions you can do, and, and some of the side missions in a weird way are actually mandatory to progress the main story. When right, it happens, okay. when we get there, I'll sort of go through it with you as we go. Well, I'll tell so you some what. Some of we'll the do. missions are really it's it'll be easy to segment it because it's all in small segments, but there's a lot of segments. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll give it a go and we'll see if it's uh, conducive to, uh, you know, a let's play. And if it is. Yeah. We'll, we'll continue playing. If it isn't, we'll stop. Simple as that, and we'll it, just move on to the next one. It's an enjoyable game in its own way. I will say, I will warn you about uh, Peace Walker. The boss battles are not very engaging, and there's there's a, one main reason for it. Um, it's the fact that they, they all you basically all your bosses in the game, there are no human bosses, there are only robot bosses, the big mecha things, very, and they all are massive ammo sponges. And there's no way you can ever have enough ammo to defeat them. So in every boss fight, you've got to then call in ammo drops in the boss fight multiple times to defeat the boss. And it just seems like poor design. That that let that lets me down. Like the boss, the bosses feel really lackluster for a, a Metal Gear series who is known for having like interesting bosses and there's usually a cool tactic to defeat them. They're all just shooting them with rockets till they're dead. That's, you've got to under, if you know that before you play it, you won't be as disappointed as I was. The um, rest of the game is cool, like the, the missions are cool. But now I, I remember seeing something in uh, official PlayStation magazine a while ago. Other magazines are available. Um, I, I that the, the looked like, and it could just been a doctored screenshot, or it could be multiplayer. But it looked like there was multiple snakes in it. Oh, uh, is that is that part of the gameplay, or is that just was that nonsense? Uh, the, <sighs> There, there is you can do multiplayer in it you can um yeah no but is that part of the main game you don't have multiple snakes you don't have multiple no. clones of all the same looking guy or anything like that because no, i don't no. again don't know anything about it because i knew i would play it at some point now you can play through it entirely in one player but you get to what's it what is cool about it is you get to build a base like snake uh well big boss gets to have an offshore oil rig type base thing and you get to expand that and recruit soldiers and you can do side missions as those soldiers to get their xp up and stuff so, you and get like and it's, and, so instead of like the Assassin's Creed side mission stuff, where you send them off on a contract and then both two two minutes well. later they'll come back. Oh, okay, you but you, well. you can actually play as them as well. There's, there are some. There are there's a there's a set there's two sections um, designated. So there's basically the uh, the other you know other countries missions where you can send them around the world and they'll do shit. And you can also do side missions in the, where you are in the main game, but you can play as those other soldiers. Or right. well, you can play as Snake as well, but it's kind of like playing as the other soldiers is quite handy because you get to up their XP and then they can do better things. You get your R and D unit up. It's quite a, it's quite a lot so, of detail and, and management. In, in I'm going to say it sounds it sounds a lot more like an Assassin's Creed type game where you've got a lot more freedom and you can run around and do different stuff than just the main story. That's true. It is. So they've kind of I, I taken that formula and went with that for Phantom Pain then by the sounds of it. That kind of yeah. thing, but just made it for a console rather than a handheld. Yes, and I, I they actually do manage that quite well in Peace Walker. Like the base management stuff I actually really quite like, so I'm looking forward to it being more in depth in the Phantom Pain. I, I can't wait for the new one, I'll be honest with you. I'm actually excited about it a game for the first time in forever. 
I can't remember the last time I was excited about a game. Even uh, the last Metal, uh, when Ground Zeroes came out, I was like, I'll get a PS4 for it, but, you know, I played it and I haven't, still haven't completed all the missions. <laughs> I would potentially like to play Ground Zeroes when we've done all of the rest of them. Uh, I know you haven't played it, Sam, and I'm perfectly happy Sam. for you not... Sorry? I was going to say, I'm actually thinking of uh, picking up a PS4 fairly, but I'm, I'm hoping to have got one by before we get to Ground Zeroes, let's put it that way. Right, okay. This, this, this is taking us a few weeks for each game, isn't it? And Metal Gear Solid 3 is massive. And Metal Gear Solid 4 is pretty big as well, so... Yeah. Um, well, I'll tell I'm you what... I'm thinking by the time we get that, I'll hopefully have had one and played through Ground Zeroes anyway. It's, I mean, it's not that long. It's, you know, the main mission's two hours and then there's loads of extra side missions and loads of extra little bits to do. So we could just play that for one session, you know, and get it out of the way. Or we could do the whole thing, do all 15 or 20 contract missions that's in it. Is it like, a, it's an open world, isn't it? Uh, yes, it's it's a very small portion of an open world. It's like, you know, after certain points you can't, and there's not all of the features that are going to be in Phantom Pain in it, but there's still a fair amount of them. Is enough to keep it interesting in my eyes, and it's more of a sandbox for you to play around in, you know? Um, you tend to do the same things over and over and over in each of the missions, but you, 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 there's also different rewards for doing them and fanboy rewards. In, there's one in particular that Lou, that Sam is going to wet his pants over when, it, when he sees it. I I'm think, sure. anyway. I've already heard that on the PlayStation version there is a very there's quite there's more fan service than there is on the Xbox one, which is interesting because obviously Metal Gear is known as being a sort of PlayStation franchise generally in terms of Metal Gear Solid One and Two being premiering on the PlayStation One and Two, and even Metal Gear Solid Four is a PS3 exclusive still. So it's is kind it? of like a, a play, yeah, it's still an exclusive title, never never been released on anything else. So I think we've got the phone call now, or yeah. something. Codec call. There, there is something. There always is something. And then the title will go doof on the screen as the call ends. Oh, must be something. There we go. Life oh. isn't just about passing on your genes. Here it is. The words of wisdom from Snake. Much more than just DNA. Through speech, DNA. music, literature and movies, what we've seen, heard, felt, anger, joy and sorrow these are the things I will pass on that's what I live for you know what it's really awful like I footage this we need to pass the torch. <laughs> if David Hater isn't in in Phantom Pain um, I still think he will be but if he isn't in it then the acting and the script writing and the story not the story, actually. I love the stories, but the acting and script writing had better be top notch. There better be a good reason for getting rid of him and doing. Yeah, because because she was been sort of spouting this. Oh, I want, it, I want Metal Gear to go in a bit more of a serious direction, and it's like it is a bit serious. He's, he's, he's sort of saying that um, that obviously David Hayter's voice is a bit more on the not as serious side. Like it, it's a, it's a very affected voice, isn't it? It's not a natural man speaking voice. Whereas from what I've heard, Keith Sutherland's voice sounds really naturalistic it's just a, it just sounds like a slightly older gruff mm. man yeah. um whereas hate well, is he's putting on a voice isn't he like the same way that no one talks like homer simpson it's a voice that is being done um, yeah. so i can could understand that but like you say if if it's Ooh, not like that and it's still the I same old silly shit that then i'll be pissed off did you find the patriots list of course it contains the personal data of 12 people <gasps> and there who was are a they? name on it Snake, it was one of our biggest Bing. contributors. <gasps> What's going on over here? Richard Branson! Anyway, <laughs> where are they? Well, we were right about them being on Manhattan, but... but what? He's busy clearing up They're Debris, anyway. Dead. All 12 Debris. Of them. When did it happen? You heard. Well, uh, about a hundred years ago. What the? What the hell? That's it. That's all you get. What did he say? <clears throat> All the names of the patriots, <coughs> not all the people, the names that they come up with, the people that had died over a hundred years ago. All right, cool. So they they sort of found out who the patriots are, but totally haven't at the same time. So yeah, thirty-one deaths, but maybe Is that it was thirty-one continues then. Yeah. Do we miss one? No, shouldn't have. Wow, uh, possible, but either way, we've counted what we've counted. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's fine. I think it was thirty we started on. I'm pretty 100, sure. 158 people killed. 
Yeah, absolute well. massacre. An absolute massacre. Snake, Snake and Raiden really don't want to go to Geneva at any point, do they? This is the game that can be played without killing anybody. Elephant, is about right? Codename <laughs> Shit As. <laughs> Codename Elephant, that's awesome. <laughs> you get like you um, get Tiger and animal. stuff, don't you? Yeah. The best one, I think, the best one is Big Boss, but I think the one next to that is Fox. And then Does Elephant fucking... just mean you've stumbled through all the maps, crushing everyone in your path <laughs> without knowing what you're doing? Yeah, yeah, basically. It's basically as if an elephant was released on the big shell. It's how Chris played. Right, I got, you know what I got for that? I got two cameras as a reward. That was it. Brilliant. Yep. Thanks. Cheers. That's a kick in the face, isn't it? Usually you that's get a rocket new... launcher or a but ban infinite money bandana or something. Or... That's, a new, that's a new game plus that. We're not going to be doing that. So. Oh, we're not playing through it again? I thought we were. <laughs> Screw on, you. On, on extreme mode this time. 12 hours, it's not too bad really, so that's about 6, 7 sessions, this is the 7th I think, isn't it? Yes. I think this is 7th, yeah. But anyway, yes, so thank everyone for thank you everyone for watching have you two got anything to say about the, the game before we, we close this one off? Um, I think that was a bit of an ordeal compared to the first one, I've got to admit it's uh... I think Metal Gear Solid 4 is going to really upset you in that case I don't think it'll upset me. This one didn't upset me, but it was uh, a, a slog. There was a lot Ooh. of story there, and we didn't really pay much attention to the story. So, what was left didn't seem that much. There was like not as not as much variance to it. You know, uh, the original Metal Gear Solid is all about loads of really great set pieces and characters, whereas this would seem like one big sort of blended together single set piece with a load of slightly dodgy blended together characters. It there wasn't the same scope there. As I said, I would, I, think, uh, I would largely agree with that. I think they. Um, hang on, what the hell am I doing? Oh, seeing which dog tags I got there. Don't care about that. Um, yeah, I think to me the control system, as I said a number of times, is much much better than Metal Gear Solid One, in general. But the camera angles still really let it down in places. I think. It, it, even though we're playing a film, essentially, you're playing a movie when you play a Metal Gear Solid game, it still doesn't mean that they should take the control of the, the camera away from you like they do some, quite often in this game. And I know I appreciate that they're trying to make it harder sometimes or, or trying to make it more interactive or more cinematic, but it doesn't... As a game, but, it just annoys me. Yeah, you shouldn't be making something harder by making it more obscure as to how you control it. I mean, that's, yeah. that's my major gripe with... Um, with Dark Souls, Dark Souls 2, is that they are hard games to play and 50% of that difficulty is just because it's hard to control because it's a pain in the ass to actually move your character around. I fell off a ledge doing the tutorial five times. I haven't yet played it. I have got. I tried to play Dark Souls the other day, but um, my, my PC just wouldn't have it for some reason. <laughs> it um, is quite buggy. You need some fixes for it and stuff. But right. that's what I mean. It's like, like, is this the last game in the Metal Gear series where the camera is kind of paying homage to the top-down viewpoint yes. of the original. And yes. from that one, it's like... Um, kind of Metal Gear Solid 3, when it was originally released, was still the top-down camera. Then they released the subsistence version, which is what the HD version is. It better add be, because I don't see why it wouldn't be. So they basically released a new version with a fully a right analog stick controllable camera, which is how we're all used to playing third-person games now. Yeah. Um, so it, it makes it so much better. Like, it's just... Yeah, you're in control of the camera. You're in control of what you want to see on the screen at any given moment. I think what that my main gripe of this, and we've we've all said it already, and I think Lou just said it anyway. But my main gripe is the fact that I didn't have as much control over the game in terms of I wasn't able to play it and enjoy it. I know we're only playing it in two-hour blocks mostly, but the two-hour blocks that we're playing, most of the time has been spent sat down with my controller on the side, reading that, talking to you guys. That isn't a game to me, you know, It's it needs more interactivity to be a game, I think. Mm. I enjoy it, don't get me wrong, and I actually do quite like the story in general, and the story in this one to me is fairly interesting, apart from the side characters and fortune and all that rubbish. And I like the, all the reveal at the end, I like the fact that it's... The conspiracy theories have obviously been thought through to, to an extent and there's a lot of detail there but as you said they don't need to say like me when i talk he doesn't need to say as much in order to get his point across you know <laughs> do you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna make an interesting analogy with this game because it, it actually features in this game a lot uh, there's a lot of jazz music in this game and i feel a little bit of like 
about this game, the way I feel about Jazz, like I really appreciate the the, how, the, the sort of challenges that this game makes on 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 us who play it, and I like the ideas and the sort of bravery of it and the the, the, the cleverness of a lot of the stuff that's in there. I appreciate it on a sort of intellectual level. It's not, but it's not very emotionally engaging. Like sitting through that with, with you then. I remember being quite invested in this game the first time I played it, but sitting through it then, it was not wasn't emotionally engaged in the story. Remember, I was intellectually the... engaged in it in terms of I like the ideas of the legacy stuff, the whole what's real, what isn't. Are we the avatar? Are we riding? Is it you? Is it whoever? All that and that was all cool. I love all that stuff, but. I'm not. It was the heart of the story wasn't getting to me, and in the first game, even though it's cheesy, it's still there for me. Like it, it has an emotional punch to it, even if it is very overblown and silly. So that's kind of how I feel about jazz music. Like I appreciate jazz music, but I don't have an emotional attachment to it. Whenever I hear it, it's just a lot of guys playing awesome music. Well, playing technically amazing stuff, but does not it doesn't feel like it connects with you somehow yeah yeah not i'm not saying that that's true of all jazz because there are some jazz pieces that i hear and I'm like that's fucking awesome but generally it's not a, an emotionally engaging genre for me yeah yeah so I, that's how i feel about Metal Gear Solid 2 it, it's an intriguing game and it took quite a lot of risks for its time and was quite daring and innovative but also had a lot of flaws as we've discussed already Metal Gear Solid 2 it's like jazz <laughs> it is. And bit. on that note, we're going to end it then. So, uh, said thanks for watching Metal Gear Solid 2. Uh, if you don't know, we're actually doing this for charity. Well, we're doing it for ourselves, but we decided, uh, Lou decided, that every time I died, because I was doing such a bad job of playing it, that he would donate a pound to charity. So, over the whole series so far, so Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid 2, um, we've had 60 deaths. So, that's 60 pounds to Charles Player Charity. Um, the next one, hopefully better camera angles i might be able to make less mistakes is it a longer game though is it is it more around the 20 30 hour mark i can't remember again it's it's a longer game yeah definitely um so a budget around 35 40 quid for that one then lou fair enough <laughs> yeah. i'm actually paying roughly what you pay for the game yeah roughly yeah that's not I, still not a lot really though is it i mean at the end of the day we could I was I was hoping to try and get you know the audience involved in it a little bit, and but it's technically we can't do it unfortunately because of technical constraints. But you know we've we've done better. We've got to a state where we're not messing up every five but seconds. I'm, I'm gonna I'll say this live, well live I'll say this on this recording. But um, I want to do a donation incentive for the next one, or at least some incentive to to add more to this. And I'm willing to donate an extra ten pounds if you can shoot the end in his wheelchair. Okay. Uh, I don't know that's how to do that, coming. so I might, I might have to. Um, it's coming. So I have to do it the first time it happens. The first time I get yeah. the only one, like, within 30 hours of gameplay or whatever, there's I, going to be about 10 milliseconds that I can do that in. So, yeah, I'm do, up for that. Is it, do you, is that worth it? Because that's genuinely quite an interesting boss fight, or would you rather just shoot and just have the funny moment? Well, if it, okay, if you do him, then you can reload the game and then do it as if you hadn't done him. But the first time you get a chance to shoot him, there's only well, I one can't save scum. Yeah, okay. No, I'm, I'm up for that. What is there anything else in this that might have an incentive wrapped around it that we can maybe get the audience uh, to participate in? Well, I'm hoping at some point I'm going to get a PC upgrade and I'm going to be able to start streaming these live as well again. Yeah. Well, um, we'll, we'll leave it to the, the, the commenters on YouTube, I guess, and I'll put it on Facebook. But I think that 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 scene for me is so ingrained in my kind of consciousness now from Sam talking about in. I have to uh, say, I haven't watched it, so if you guys don't tell me to do it, I probably won't. <laughs> I will. Probably, I, totally I, forget. I know exactly where it happens, and I will tell you exactly. I'll tell you how to do it, but it does require being quick with a sniper rifle. I, uh, so, you know. I will donate an extra £50 to this if I can play the entire of Metal Gear Solid 3 without having, like, unless it's forced, without changing my camo, because I hate that mechanic so much. I don't think that's going to be an issue. I don't, I, I, I don't think you're going to be able to do that. Yeah, that's, that's that exactly way. why I said 50 quid, because it's not going to happen. It's just so annoying having to go into the menu, and then there's if you do it so many times, there's slight transitions in all the menus, and I remember distinctly that it was just dead annoying trying to change your camo every time you go into a new foliage. Let's discuss that when we start playing that game, because it will yeah. become 
readily apparent. Um, yeah, I've, I know nothing about this mechanic, so... No, there's quite a lot of new mechanics in this game, actually, and it's... Uh... Oh, it's quite... I really it's, enjoyed it, it's but I haven't completed it. It's probably the deepest game in terms of mechanics. Yeah, but you will this time. Volgin. <laughs> if I get stuck on Volgin again, mate, you're going to be bankrupt. The amount of times I died <laughs> on him last time, but it was on the Uber hard setting and I, I didn't have anything. And even though Sam tells me I could have done it without ammo or whatever, I just couldn't get it. I couldn't get the timing on it. But I think it was because I was playing it on hard. And Sam, Sam hasn't played it on hard because he's soft. I have. Oh, whatever. But yes, uh, yeah, 10 quid extra on top of the, the death counter if you can snipe the end. And All if right. you do snipe him, then you can reload the game and you can play it through normally so we can see the boss fight. Cause and I'm... then what about the deaths well, during the end? Is that, does that count as well? Surely it must they do. They count, yeah. Yeah, they do count, yeah. It's just an as... extra incentive if you can actually top him in your first try. All right, give it a go. Yeah. I might even make it 20 funny. quid. I might it's even make it 20 quid. I think it's unlikely I'm going to be able to do it, but I'll give it a go. Give it a go. I'll have to try and get some practice in with my uh, sniper scope. Where about when you get lies about halfway through or something like that? Um, I just remember the the bit yeah. coming up to it being really annoying as well. Yeah, it's about halfway through actually, or oh, maybe a third of the way through. It's it's a long, it's a pretty long game. You actually go on a really quite epic sort of journey in that one as well. It, like you go across a lot of different landscapes. It's got the most variety, apart from maybe Metal Gear Solid Four in terms of. The amount of environments and places that you go to is really cool. Who's it's a fucking great game. I'm looking forward to it. Who's the, is it Volgin, the big, like, muscly guy? Yeah, the big, muscly, Russian, electronic, punchy guy. <laughs> yeah. That'll make sense I don't, when you see him. I don't like his character <laughs> in general in this, but everyone else, I think, is quite cool. But he's yeah. he's the character that you're supposed to hate. Like, he is, uh, he's just got no redeeming features. Uh, yeah. You know. He's like the he's like the more interesting. he's like the the war general in the, in the movie that wants just wants to declare war and nuke everybody for the for the sake of it. He doesn't seem to have yeah. any any kind of it, reasoning for his his decisions. He's a pretty black and it. white character. He's just an out and out bad guy. Whereas most of the other characters in Metal Gear Three aren't quite. Yeah, I'm actually really looking forward wants. to completing it for one. You know, getting it done, finished, and then seeing what the, the boss fight is like. And yeah, and and the ending. The end I might get a little bit choked up in the ending, possibly, when it gets there. Well, if you we'll haven't see. got your camera on, we're not going to see it, are we? You can just mute yourself and go. <laughs> yeah. I might have to get you down here, Sam, so we can see you on camera. You I too will, will believe <laughs> Sam can cry. I will donate 20 pounds if Sam cries. Genuinely <laughs> cries. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm not going to actually cry. <laughs> well, it is, then. It is, quite, it is quite emotional, though. You just don't want me to donate anything, do you, to the, to the charity? I said I'm going to half it anyway with Lou if it gets too high, I think. I, I, don't, I say, still well, don't think I'm, 60 quid's too high, though. I don't think it's too high. I'm happy to contribute, but with 60 quid now, it's not, yeah. we've not played it's through Metal Gear Solid 3 or 4, yeah? Off, op, ops, or, or Grand Peace Zeros. Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah, we're going to have to do some uh, like individual, because Phantom Pain is going to be an open world game, I think we might be worth doing some individual, like, let's play, not let's plays, but kind of just running around doing daft stuff yeah, instead I wanna, of a playthrough. Plus, like I said before, and I want to play through the new games on my own and have at least completed them for myself. If Say if like, you do a Let's Play and we're on it and you show me stuff that I've not seen, fine, as long as I've had a chance to play through it. But I don't want my first experience of it to be watching somebody else play, as I'm sure you wouldn't either. Yeah, but I'm, I'm still tempted to play it with you guys, like when I do it. Okay. Maybe, you know, as a first time. But even though I did say before that I wanted to play it on my own, I'm not sure I've got the time to play it on my own and do this. So I might we'll just see. do it with you guys. It's not I'll... coming out till like April next year or something, is it? So let's just see. Yeah, hurry up, Kojima. No, don't hurry up, actually. We've got loads of stuff to do before we uh, we get to that point. <laughs> anyway, yeah, yeah. so yes, I'm actually going to say bye now. And thanks, everyone, for watching this. Uh, we'll be back with Metal Gear Solid 3 next week. Hopefully, we might have a bit of a break. I don't know. It depends on how our schedules are. Um, but yeah, thanks a lot, everyone. And uh, we'll see you next time. See you later. Cheers. Bye. Bye. -bye.